In today's video, I'm going to be fitting the lower suspension arm on the right hand side of my BMW Z3. Many of the steering and suspension parts on this car are corroded. This offside front lower arm is particularly bad, so I'm doing this first. I don't know if you can see in there, but that boot over that bottom ball joint there is split or very heavily perished. And this bush here is separating. We'll begin with disconnecting this drop link from the lower arm. And just under here is a very corroded 16 mil nut that we need to undo. It's incredibly tight and just using a ratchet and a 16 mil socket like this was not shifting it so I'm going to have to get a bar on this. This should give the additional leverage that's needed. But as this is fighting me all the way and I don't need to save any of those components I may as well just undo this drop link here at the anti-roll bar right here. This is a 16 mil nut. Bit of WD on the threads makes things a little easier. So we hold the actual shaft here with a 16 mil and then we can get a socket on here. We can now turn our attention to this 19 mil nut. Rather amazingly, that came undone very easily. There's no quick way of doing this. Turn at a time. We can now use either a ball joint splitter or a pickle fork to separate that lower ball joint from the hub carrier separated it's now given us enough clearance to undo the last few turns of that nut because it had been up against the shock absorber now time to undo these two 17 mil that one came under nicely as did that one these are two you definitely wouldn't want to snap off note the two locating nails here. At this point all the tension has really been removed from this because it's no longer connected here at the anti-roll bar drop link. It's no longer connected at the back and this lower ball joint now is relatively loose. Unfortunately I've still got that nut to remove but now this has dropped down I can now likely get something on here to hold it and then remove the nut. In the end I needed to get some vice grips on here which enabled me to grip that with sufficient tightness to be able to loosen the nut for the last few turns. The nut is free. At this point the lower arm is completely detached from the hub carrier, it's detached from the body point at the rear and also the anti-roll bar drop link. So the only attachment point now is this inner one and this is the one I've dreaded the most. Now you only have to look at the new lower arm to realize that this inner one is a very long spindle there. So that goes up through the subframe and is secured here. This is one that I really don't want to spin because I think it'll be an absolute cow if this starts spinning. So I'm hoping that it doesn't. But if it does, it's looking very much like there's an Allen key recess in there. So I can hopefully lock it depending on the accessibility. I can feel this nut in here. It's kind of there. I'm not going to be able to show you any footage of me removing it due to where it is. I will now undertake its removal. The nut is a 22 mil, so we need this. So whilst it's accessible, this is how much movement you get on the spanner with each turn. So I think I'm going to be here a while. Now, although progress is slow, you can see that this nut is coming undone actually quite easily. I think maybe the oil mist from the engine bay has kept that exposed thread lubricated, prevented it from going rusty, which is normally the reason why such nuts are hard to remove. So the middle is not spinning, it's coming undone very slowly, but it is coming undone. And we get the pickle fork in there. Okay, I'm very pleased to say this is out. In the end, all I needed to do was just tap this repeatedly and it just dropped down from this in a mounting point. I really didn't need to go at it with a pickle fork. Now, this is when you can see just how knackered this is. That is split and it's bone dry in there. 
miraculously there doesn't seem to be any play and as for that well that's separating there you can see that's on its way out let's take a minute to talk about parts now we know that the original arm is absolutely knackered so here's the new one from Phoebe Bilstein here are the details I also have the drop link this is a Delphi component part number details the bracket which goes through the arm I actually got these from eBay because the originals are silly money and I found these and they look well made so I bought them and then the bolts and the washers for this bolt washers I will leave these part numbers in the description we have here the two new nuts and just in case we do have to hold this steady if it does spin there is a 6mm allen key right here you'll see that I've actually got the allen key in there that way I'll see if the inner is turning there's nothing more disheartening than spending 10 minutes tightening it only to realize that the inner was spinning all along at least this way I'll see if it is happening I think before I do the other side I will invest in a 22mm ratchet span something I haven't got that would speed this up considerably the torque setting is said to be 86 newton meters. No, I can't get a torque wrench in here, but I'm gonna estimate that and ensure this is tight. Next, let's move on to this. We need to ensure that the dowels locate. With this correctly located in the dowels, these can be retightened. You'll know when they're correctly located because you'll really feel it snap home. By my research, these are tightened to 47 newton meters. Be sure to do your own research and be happy with whatever torque settings you use. I turn it onto a right hand lock and that gives me better accessibility. Now we can tighten this nut. 19mm spanner size. The centre of the ball joint starts to spin. I just raise the jack which prevents that from turning. You know when it's turning because the, the boot starts to rotate. The torque value for this nut is said to be 62 newton meters. So I'm not amazingly tight actually, but again, I can't get a torque wrench in there, so it's just an estimation. I have a new nut and bolt that goes through the bottom of the drop link and the part numbers are right there. These are fitted together. I'm not gonna fully tighten any of this for reasons which will become clear. Using a five mil Allen key to steady the center, I can then tighten this 17 mil nut I don't know the torque setting for that nut, but it's just uh, tightened. Don't go crazy with it. And now we need to just raise this lower arm, jack it up a bit to enable this to locate through here and get the nut on underneath. 16 mil nut, tighten this. Tighten to 59 Newton meters. And with some load on the suspension, I tighten this bolt that goes through this lower bush on the anti roll bar drop link. Now on some vehicles you do actually have to do final retightening when the car is on the ground but because this bush is already fitted and preset in its position that's a ball joint that moves and that's a ball joint that moves that's not necessary on this car that likewise is a ball joint now this is more of a fixed kind of bush so that does need to be tightened when there's load on the vehicle and I did tighten that with a little bit of load on this suspension strut to recreate that so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was useful i'm really pleased that that's been changed because that side needed doing the most that suspension arm was really ropey that outer ball joint was in a very bad state and i'm glad it's done i've got the other side to do i've already got the parts probably won't make a video on that because it's the same thing you don't need to see it again still lots to do track rods track rod ends still got these here and the next video you see after this is going to be the cross brace. Because as you may remember, it's very shabby. Look at that. I'll see you again in another video very soon. Meantime, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.